Welcome to my sewing room. The star of the show today is a little machine that we call the smocking machine or the smocking pleater. Since you've learned beginning smocking, I thought it might be nice to teach you a little bit about how to use the machine that put those nice little pleats in that we smocked on top of. Well, here it is. Here is the little pleater. As you can see, it has gears and you can turn it and it has needles across here. And in a few minutes, I will show you everything you ever wanted to know about how to use a little smocking pleater. All different types of smocking can be done using the pleater. This, this is a straight yoke dress. This is water, uh, excuse me, silk dupioni with beautiful, beautiful smocking on it. Then we pleat a dress called a bishop. This dress is done out of Swiss Batiste and has geometric smocking, but this dress and this type dress is called a bishop dress. This dress is what we call ready to smock. After you learn to pleat, you might want to go ahead and put together a dress and just be able to take it with you just to do the smocking. We thought it would be really cute to have this little smocking design plate on this little red and white striped dress with the little white panel right in the middle just waiting to be smocked. Here is another ready to smock. You see, you can see, let me just pull this apart so you can see. The lines are in there, the guidelines that you'll be smocking with on this little bishop dress. You might want to do a Christmas version or an Easter version of this little dress. Don't forget the little boys. This is another ready to smock outfit, which we thought would be really cute to smock dinosaurs on this little boy outfit. The little yoke dress here has smocking at the top of the yoke, smocking at the bottom of the yoke, and the real star of today is how did those pleats get there? So let me share with you all about using the pleater, or it's commonly called the smocking machine. English smocking has become much easier with the invention of the pleater. Here is what the little pleater looks like. It just simply has some gears with little grooves in it. It has needles all across the front. And in just a few minutes, I'll show you exactly how you put those pleats in so you too can enjoy English smocking. First, I'd like to share with you of what the bishop dress looks like before. Now, you're just not going to believe it. Here it is. This is what the bishop dress looks like, a little girl's dress, all the way out there, before it is run through the pleater. After it is run through the pleater, when you get ready to smock it, it will look like this. Isn't that pretty? And you indeed do have that much fullness on little bishop dress. See, we've got the pleats in there, and we're all ready for smocking. Now then, after you have the piece that you saw that's in my lap now, you have to roll it onto a dowel stick. In other words, this is that bishop dress that I held up just a few minutes ago, rolled onto a dowel stick before I can put it in the pleater. Okay, that's dress number one. Now then, the second dress, or the piece I would like to show you, is this little, this is the smocked part of a yoke dress. Now, how do those pleats get in this yoke dress? I'll show you in just a minute. But this is what it looks like after it is pleated. Let's go back to the pleater now. The first step in the pleater is to put thread in those needles. Now, I'm going to measure what I call a nose yard. You know, back a long time ago, that's the way we used to measure things. I'm going to come in here and clip a piece of quilting thread, and then I'm going to thread it. Oh, let me tell you a little quick trick first. Why do I use quilting thread? Because it is stiff and strong. I do not like to pleat with regular thread because, good heavens, what if I'm in there just smocking and smocking and I pull the pleats and one of those threads breaks? That's the reason I use this very strong quilting thread. Okay, now here is how I thread this pleater. I put my finger under there so I can see. I, I thread the quilting thread in. Now watch me carefully. I pull about six or eight inches. You see, here's the pleater thread, six or eight inch piece, and then my long piece goes all the way down. All right, let me do that one more time for you. I cut a nose yard of the quilting thread, clip it at an angle, once again, put my finger under there so I can see the hole of the needle and leave a short end. In other words, one end is right here and the rest of this yard of thread goes all the way down toward the floor. All right, that strong quilting thread. Now, let me go ahead and show you what one of these yoke dresses, remember this is the little smocked 
front yoke, or not the front yoke, it's the front skirt of a yoke dress, I once again roll it on this dowel stick. Now I'm going to show you really up close some other trick on this. Do you see those armhole curves have been drawn in? Well, why don't I just go ahead and cut them out before I pleat it? Well, I'll tell you why. It's not so easy to pleat that way. So I'm going to go ahead and run the pleating all the way over to the very edge. Okay, I'm now ready to finish rolling this up. And I'm going to insert this dowel stick, let me move my thread here, into the pleating machine. And you might say, well, Martha, how did you know how many rows of, of threads to put in that? How many needles should you thread up? Well, the rule of thumb there is that you use as many as your smocking design plate calls for. Sometimes I pleat eight rows. Sometimes I pleat 12 rows. Usually a general rule of thumb is to pleat about 12 rows and then you smock on about 10 rows. Okay. Here we go, I'm going to look over this pleater. Now I have to kind of get over it here, and I'm going to line it up. I'm lining the fabric, which you really can't see yet, but let me show you, let me just kind of tilt this now so you can see. Do you see how that fabric is lined up? Okay, I'm lining it up and guiding it on a row that does not have any thread in it. Okay, now I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to actually look behind there so I will keep guiding it on course. Now what happens if it slips a bit, little bit? Well, just get in here and pull it back where it's supposed to be. I want you now to watch this hand right here, what I'm doing with my fingers on this fabric of this skirt that I'm now pleating. I give a gentle pull this way to be sure things do not bubble up. I don't want this fabric to get bubbled up. So as I'm pleating, I give a little pull. Now see, I really need three or four hands to do this, but not really. So I'm gonna lean over and look behind here to be sure that I'm keeping it straight. Let me pull it over a little bit. And I'm pulling on this end, pulling on this end to be sure it does not bubble. Okay, now I may have to come back in here and hold this to get it back online a little bit. This is not exactly my best angle for pleating, I will have to confess. Now then, you see what happens? This is called loading the fabric on the needles. When I get the fabric loaded up, then I take my fingers and I gently unload the fabric. In other words, I pull the pleats off and that way I'm all ready to pleat again. See those nice pleats? Okay, now let me get up here where I can see, where I can watch where this is going. Watch both of my hands. Oh, by the way, I'm turning this knob with my right hand. Let me go ahead and pleat a little bit more. I'm trying to see so I can keep it lined up exactly where it's supposed to be lined up. That's kind of hard to do sitting down. I usually like to stand. Once more, do you see how my uh, pleats are loaded on the needles? Let me slip this off. That's all there is to it. Just kind of slip it off gently. Now, I'm going to try to speed this up just a little bit. And I'm keeping my hands where I can pull it on this end to be sure no bubbles come. However, it, bubbles don't come really very easily. Now, see, once again, the fabric is loaded up on the needles. So I'm going to slip it off like that. Then I'm going to turn a little bit more. Turn and twist and twist and turn. It's really very easy to turn. Twist and turn and I will slip the needles, or rather slip the fabric off the needles once again. Then I'm kind of coming to the end here, to the end of the little yoke dress. I'm gonna twist and turn, I'm almost finished. Here come the other little lines I've drawn. Well, I may have to pull them off just one more time there. I'll slip it off, just like that. And then I will go ahead, aha, the whole yoke is pleated now and I will just carefully slip them off. Now I'll hang on to the machine. I'll go ahead and pull it off onto the, now here is where I unload the pleater. I'm gonna slip it off into the, onto those long strings. Remember I had the little short strings here? Well, guess what happens? I slip it and I slip it and the little short strings are now unloaded and guess what? My fabric is pleated and I'm now ready to do English smocking. Now as you pull it off, you might have twisted the threads a little bit let me show you how to line those back up. You simply pull them like this, pull it like this, and then you see how pretty those pleats are. And then if there's any little twist, just, get, just kind of pull it up and down like so. Well, I sure pulled it that time. Now, you don't smock 
quite that tightly. You smock a little bit loosely, depending on the size dress you're doing. Now, what do I do with these threads over here? I'm going to have to tie them off before I begin smocking, and I will smock from where the little armhole curves go from one side to the other, and let me kind of straighten my area out here. That is absolutely how easy it is to pleat the pleats for smocking, which really a long time ago, those needles had to be, the little pleats had to be drawn up. Oh, wow. Okay, that's all there is to it. Next, I have a beautiful pillow for you. I used the pleating machine to pleat the flower on this pillow. As you can see, it's a beautiful pillow made out of peach, and the section in the center here is what I did on the pleater, this cute little flower part in the middle I'm going to show you how to make, and netting on the edge, and then another cute little pleated uh, a ruffle around the edge. This was done on a, a foot that you use on the sewing machine to pleat. Okay, quickly let's go over this pillow. The base of the fabric is a Swiss Batiste and here is the batting. This makes pillows really nice. The next layer on the pillow is a double layer of netting pulled around into a circle. And by the way, here's a close-up of the of that pleating that's done with a foot on the sewing machine. This is a pleating foot on the sewing machine. Isn't that a good looking little ruffle to go around the edge? Now here is where the smocking machine came in. Okay, I pleat this with the same color, in other words, white thread rather than blue thread, then fold it over about halfway and then twist it around in a circle. Now that is not a very good example. I'd have to do this on a board, but that's the way you make the center section, which goes in the center. And this little center flower is absolutely adorable. It's two different kinds of braid twisted together. I mean, excuse me, turned into, well, I guess you'd say twisted. One little kind of braid is twisted like this. Actually, it's fringe, not braid. And then there is another color of fringe that goes around the outside. And there is how you make that sweet little flower that goes in the very center of this pillow. Now that was a quick and cute project. Next, Kathy Brower will bring you a silk ribbon stitch and it is called the herringbone stitch. I'm pleased to have as my guest today, Kathy Brower. Kathy is senior editor of So Beautiful Magazine. And she, you know, this is the pleating show and we have an exciting silk ribbon embroidery stitch to show you, yes, on pleating. Welcome to the show, Kathy. Thank you, Martha. I thought since we've been talking about smocking and pleating, this would be a great time to introduce you to a new type of smocking using silk ribbon as the stitching instead of uh, embroidery floss. I want to show you a couple of examples that we have here. This is a little bishop collar with the silk ribbon stitches. Now these are floss stitches here, but this can also be done with a uh, small silk ribbon. Um, these are all silk ribbon flowers. So as you can see, it embellishes pleating very nicely, and it's also very quick. So if you have a quick smocking project to do, it's great to use silk ribbon. This is also silk ribbon, and I wanted to show you, this is what the uh, little stitches look like when they're done in silk ribbon instead of floss. And I'm going to show you how to do a herringbone stitch. I'm first going to show you how to do the herringbone stitch flat, and then I'm going to show you how to do it on pleating, because it's a little bit different. Flat, what you do is you start somewhere. What I've done here is I've drawn two parallel lines, just as guidelines. If you want to do this just to get the hang of it, it's a good idea for practice. So I'll start down here, and I'll come over at the top, just a little bit over, and take a small stitch in the opposite direction. Now you can bother with keeping your ribbon straight if you want to, or you can let it twist. Just for quickness, I'm going to let it twist on me. Then I'm going to come straight down here and I'm going to take another stitch this way. Pull that out. Then I'm going to come up and take another stitch this way. You see how this kind of forms a pattern and a rhythm? And it makes a little zigzag across your fabric. So now I'm going to show you how to do this using on pleating. And I have a pre-pleated piece of fabric, which you would want to back smock very well. I have not back smocked this. But when you use silk ribbon, you need to back smock your pleating. And I'm going to start just on a middle row here. I'm going to come up from the bottom on the top of one of my pleats. And then I will count over, let's say, I'll count over about eight or nine stitches. When, 
when you do it, you need to count precisely each stitch. But since I'm just showing this, I'm going to just guesstimate, estimate how far over I'm going. Then I would count equally over the same amount of stitches on this side and come down to the next row. Now you can do half rows if you like. You get that over the needle, or under the needle actually. Get that untangled. Pull it through, come up to the next, skip over so many, eight, eight or nine rows, or five, or you can make it as big or as little as you want it to, to be. And you keep going back and forth. And see what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the top of the pleat right there. I'm going completely through the pleat and pulling it through. Now I've done a very large one. You'd want to probably keep yours very small. As you see here, I've grabbed more pleats than over here. You'll want to count each and every pleat. So it takes a little bit more time to do it on pleating than it does on flat work, but you get the idea. It's a great edge stitching, a great row stitch, and it's really fun and easy to do. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. Next, I have a really pretty little doll dress for you, and we're using the concept of smocking on a printed fabric. My little doll has a really cute smocked dress. The little smocking is really precious. It's on this beautiful printed fabric, but the technique I really want to share with you, can you see this little collar? There is a piece of one quarter inch ribbon stitched down at the collar and once again on the sleeve. That little ribbon trick is what I really want to show you because it is wonderful not only on doll clothes but also on women's clothes. As a matter of fact, there's a very famous designer that uses that around the bottom of nearly all of her skirts. All right, here we go. I have my doll sleeve on the wrong side. I have put the wash away basting tape, this is what it looks like before you pull it off, on the bottom of a piece of a quarter inch uh, polyester or, or satin ribbon. Then I put the ribbon, I glue it down to the very bottom of the sleeve on the wrong side. Now, next step. All right, you see here it is already glued down on the wrong side. Now I'm going to turn it over to the right side where I'm going to put another piece of the basting tape down. Then pull the protective side off. Of course, I'm going to probably baste my fingers to this doll dress. Off of that and turn it up, being very careful to get it pushed down where you don't see the fabric. Go ahead and turn it up all the way across. And then after it's all pasted and basted down, you go to your sewing machine and simply straight stitch. I'm going to stitch the top first and this makes a really nice finish. I guess I could turn on the sewing machine, couldn't I? <laughs> this makes a really nice finish along the edge. So I'm going to stitch the top first and by the way, as I said, this is just as nice done on ladies' clothes or blouses or any kind of a sleeve as it is on doll clothes. Just stitch right along there and then what will I do? Turn around and stitch right along the other side. Just simply put two rows, two rows of straight stitching. You know that basting tape really does the trick. It basted itself right to my sewing machine. <laughs> and then run two rows of straight stitching and that is a really, really elegant finish for the bottom of anything. In this case, we've used it not only on the doll sleeve, which is right here on the little doll sleeve, which I have partially ready for you, but we've used it also on the little ruffle that goes around her neck. Now I have a craft for you. This cute little pleated lampshade uses another type of pleater. This pleater has little folds in it. It's almost like a cardboard fabric and it has little folds in it. Now let me show you how you do it, how you put the pleats in. I pick up one of the folds and I just stuff the fabric behind there. Okay, I pick up another fold and I push it in there. I pick up another fold and I push it in there and then when it all gets pushed in, I press right on top of that. Now here, after I finish getting it pleated and pressed, I will stitch across the top. Let me show you where the top is going to go. On the top of this little purchase lampshade, the stitched part will go right there. You can see we just glued down braid around it. Now I also, before I do the pleating, I stitch across the fabric. Not to hold the pleats down, but because I'm going to fringe the fabric at the bottom. Then I simply put it down, I fringe it, and hot glue gun the little braid that goes around there. And this is a neat little gizmo to have. 
Let me show you one more thing real quickly. This is a box which has this type of pleating done on the box with a little bit of silk ribbon. Next, I've asked Margaret Taylor to join me today to demonstrate the folded ribbon prairie points quilt square. Hello. Today I want to introduce you to some different forms of ribbon work. I've used a lot of ribbon on the quilt that we've done for this series. As you can see from the block, we have ribbon flowers. The flower in the center is made out of netting lace. And this is what we're going to do today. The folded prairie points made out of ribbon. This particular ribbon I used is a grain ribbon. And all you have to do to create those folded prairie points is start with the length of ribbon. This is the key right here, this little white piece. This is made out of buckram, but anything that has stability will work. We cut it as wide as we want the points to be, or the tucks to be rather, then we put it in and fold it, fold the ribbon up on it. And as you'll see, I fold it up enough so that I miss the point above it. And then we take our needle and thread, and the thread we're using is a just a basic all-purpose sewing thread because you want to have some strength in it, and you catch the tuck right in the center, then go back through, then we move the buckram, fold it up again, and continue this until you finish your you have your length of ribbon that you need pleated. Then, in order to make the points. We simply take the, a matching thread, go down to the base of your tuck, as you can see here. We go down to the base of the tuck. Then we're going to go caddy corner. We pick up first the right, then we cross over to the left, and then we simply pull it. As you can see, we pull it down. Take your needle and work your ribbon good and flat, and then take an anchor stitch. Now you can anchor your points if you'd like. This one is free, and if I wanted to anchor the point, I'd simply go back up to the top and make a stitch through the point. Let's do that one more time to make sure you understand. We go to the base of the tuck, cross it over. and then pull it down. And then to put it on your block, you simply take your block of fabric and mark off your quarter point, lay your tuck down. I prefer to stitch it down by hand, but you may per do it by machine. Now, Martha has a wonderful garment to show you in her attic. I bought this lovely dress recently in Paris, France. Actually, it was at a flea market. The top of the dress has a beautiful collar, very unusual I might add, going down to the skirt, which I think is really unusual and just really pretty. It has tucks, more tucks, laces, more tucks, all the way down, and then of course just the little edging at the bottom of this really, really interesting dress. For our Sewing from the Heart segment today, I have a letter from Lynn Luno from the Kids Sax program out of Cleveland, Ohio. Once upon a time, in a big city by a great lake, nearly 1,500 homeless children were given a Kids Sack, a warm, cuddly sleeping bag. Each night, these children curled up in their colorful, personalized bags and snuggled in with a sense of home and security. Kids Sacks are sleeping bags for homeless children, lovingly produced by volunteers on production lines at two regional shopping malls and distributed in homeless shelters. The Junior League of Cleveland Incorporated volunteers deliver the Kids Sacks to the children during interactive activities including story readings, face paintings, and games. They make these sleeping bags in a mall. They just take lot, a, a sewing machine company, takes lots of machines out to a uh, shopping mall and volunteers literally get together and make these cute kids sacks that has a heart up here that says sweet dreams, a little teddy bear, and they also stitch in or write in each child's name that gets this nice new kids sack. Wonderful volunteer ideas from our friends in Cleveland. Thank you so much for joining me on my sewing room today. We surely hope you'll be with us next time. <music>